Good morning, everyone. I hope that this video finds you all healthy, happy, and well. I realize now that my videos are making some reach and there's some people who do not know me. So let me introduce myself. I am Marjorie Phoenix. I am a creativity activist and I'm also the author of the book, Who the Hell Do You Think You Are? And I help people who have stories to tell, um, help them tell their stories, share them in the world, and do the work that they wanna do to bring, make a difference in the world to bring a change in the world in some way because of the experience that I've had. If you read a little bit about my background, you will see from my experience, I have not only written a book, but I started a nonprofit organization, The Giving Voices Project. And I also host retreats and circles and uh, coaching based on um, stories from survivors of abuse. Most of the people that I work with have gone through some sort of abuse or trauma in their life. And they're at a point now where they want to take that story and they want to do something more in the world because of their experience. So if this is your first time here, I want to welcome you. And I want to continue the discussion that we started this week about self-discovery. And um, I was supposed to be on yesterday and I apologize. I was not feeling my, myself yesterday and uh, so I, I really needed to just step back and take a moment to take care of myself. But um, I'm here this morning continuing the lesson on um, our self-identity crisis. That's really what I should have titled this and I think I'm gonna change the, the title. Um, and why the self-discovery process is just so important. And I wanna read you a quote here from Joseph Murphy and it reads, the oak sleeps in the acorn, acorn, the grand sequoia tree sleeps in its tiny seed and the bird waits in the egg and God waits for his unfoldment of man. And I use this quote in my book because I believe that something is waiting to be birthed from you and from every one of us. We all have something waiting to be birthed, but it cannot be birthed unless we go through the process of self-discovery. Because if you don't do this process, if you really don't take yourself through the self-discovery process, whatever you bring into the world will not be authentic. It will not be truly you. And that's why it's so important. It won't be as powerful. And I believe that God wants us to unfold to be the person that God has created us to be. A lot of us are not living up to our fullest fullest identity um, in the world. We know we have a story to tell. We know we have work to do, but yet we hold ourselves back because there's a story, there's a narrative that we're telling ourselves about ourselves. And there's something that we believe about ourselves that is not true. And I want you to know that it's not about what you see in the natural in front of you the obstacles that you see, I want you to work from a spiritual realm. I want you to work from a place that is unseen because it it's, is from there that's where the power resides, okay? And I want you to also look at the challenges that you faced as an opportunity to become more and to be more. And I've got to be honest with you. I came up with the becoming process back in 2013 i believe it was and this was way before michelle obama wrote her book and it was just interesting because my process of going through self-discovery i write about it being a becoming process a manifestation of me coming into my self-identity as a child of god and this is why this is so important so our identities, unfortunately, are being tied up in people, in things, in our jobs, in our careers, in our experiences. We have an experience and we hold on to that identity. We continue to walk 
in this victimhood. And even worse, some of us continue this, the abuse. We self-abuse in our lives. And um, that trauma then and that cycle continues because we're holding on to this identity that is not us. And, you know, I remember when I was labeled um, a criminal because I had been arrested and I now had a, uh, a record. Um, and I remember my ex-husband going all around our small town, talking to all of our friends and trying to ruin my reputation. And I remember, you know, God saying to me, keep your mouth shut. You don't need to defend yourself. You know who you are and the time will come when <laughs> everyone will know who you are. That was difficult. That was difficult for me to do that because I felt like I needed to defend myself because that's all I was doing was just defending myself. But when I sat back and focused in on me and my healing and just allowed God to just take over the time came. I was able to tell my side of the story, not just my book, well before my book, opportunities came for me to tell people and show people exactly who I am. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy your reputation. Don't allow it to do that, all right? Hold on to who you are as a child of God. So listen to the voice of the person that created you, of the entity that created you. Listen to the voice of God for all of the answers for your next step. This is why the self-discovery process is so important, but yet it could be one, one of the most difficult places to start because it is a, a place where we actually have to sit and shut our mouths and be quiet. The only conversation we should be having is with God. All right, sitting in that and asking those important questions. And that's really another part of the self-discovery process is about asking those important questions. And I think we don't ask them. Now, a lot of times we will say when we're in the midst of it, why me, Lord, why me? Why not you? But then another way of asking why me is why me? for such a time as this, to go through this experience and to now be called to do something with it. Why me? Now that question will get you some interesting answers when you frame it that way. So I did a post a couple days ago about self-discovery questions that you can ask yourself on a daily basis. And this is one of the things that I started doing very early on. And there's one particular question that I ask now, even today, every single day, that keeps me focused on who I am as a child of God and what I am here to do. But the questions that you can ask yourself is, um, what am I grateful for? And really, when you're still dealing with even if you're out of the pain, right? Let's just say you're, you're out of the situation um, and you're trying to move forward with your life, okay? This doesn't have to be when you're in crisis mode. But these are questions that anyone can be asking at this time when they're not quite sure about what they wanna do, where they wanna go, how they wanna do it, and what the next steps are. Sometimes it's not about moving, trying to go anywhere. It's about just being in this moment right here and listening and asking, some questions and one of the questions is, is okay what am i grateful for and when you start to look around and you do this every single day about what you're grateful for things will start to open up for you and you'll see more opportunities another important question is who can i bless and let me tell you something when i really did I, when i had nothing when i had nothing um i was looking for an opportunity to bless someone else who also didn't have nothing and that 
is one of the best gifts that you can give. It does something for your soul. It does something for the other person. It gives them hope in humanity. Um, but looking for that opportunity to bless someone else. And then the, the question that I ask myself every day, because I have been created to create, and that's what makes me a creative, <laughs> and you as well, is what do I want to create today? So really, what do I want this day to look like? And knowing that you are responsible for how you want to create your day to look. And that just starts to open up the floodgates and open up the doors and the answers will come so everything you need to know is inside of you um, sometimes we need a little nudge um, but I think when we start the practice of turning the lens in towards us and stop looking out to the world and out to other people and out to particular circumstances to make us feel like we belong or give us a sense of, um, of identity, the healing and the growth is going to require you to do the self-examination. It's going to require that of you. So don't be afraid. Do not be afraid to ask, who am I? Don't be afraid to ask that question. Don't be afraid to ask yourself, what is it that I'm really afraid of? What is my biggest fear? Don't be afraid to ask, what is the thing that brings me the most joy? Don't be afraid to ask yourself the tough questions and to give yourself time to answer. And it's not a one-off. It, it's a daily practice. And as you do it on a daily basis, you will start to see things sprout up from the ground, from within. Part of the, the Phoenix process that I shared with you guys um, in my last video, if you haven't looked at it, please go and look at Monday's um, episode. Um, and at some point, I will share with you all where the Phoenix process came from. And because it's, it, it's a part, the self-discovery process is a part of that. And it's really about a shedding and a reclaiming journey for us all. It's, it's very beautiful. It's self-discovery, it's self-reflection, and then it's self-mastery. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's a beautiful experience and I can't wait to, to you know, have you guys be a part of that. So um, I'll do that in another episode. But I'm gonna finish off and just remind you all that in this week of self-discovery, I would really love for you to share on the page um, if you've gone through a self-discovery process and where you might be. If you look at the first video on Monday, we, we talked about that self-discovery process and what that looks like. We talked about the self-reflection. We're going to get a little bit more into the self-reflection and the belief systems that we have um, as, um, you know, as it pertains to the, the things that we've experienced in life, but also our upbringing right um this the baggage that we bring along with us in our life's journey that has brought us to a point um like a lot of my self-discovery process helped me to connect the dots about how i even got to a point where i could marry someone that showed the signs of being um having a, an abusive personality but not being able to recognize it and um, so looking at my entire story, um, you know, which, uh, which is another thing that I, I can't wait to do with you all. I'm, I'm, I'm working on a program for that about our life story. Um, yeah, so I, I don't want to say anything more. But anyway, <laughs> so yeah, so we're going to continue the conversation tomorrow. We're going to finish off the week tomorrow with an interview with Yvette Renee Dewar. Yvette and I have just became new friends. Oh, this woman has so much energy and I just love her. She is just um, real. 
and she has this show she does on Facebook called Chats with a Vet. Um, they're little short, maybe 10 minute chats where she is just keeping it real about, um, you know, life situations and about the love of God. And um, I'm so um, excited to have her on. She is also a survivor. And so she's going to share with us her self-discovery process. So I want you guys to definitely turn, tune in for that tomorrow as we finish off the week, um, the self-discovery process week. So that will do it for me today. Thank you again for joining. And like I always say, go out and change the world. I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.